Good morning. This is the Tate Geological Museum at Casper College and I'm Russell Hawley. And today I'm going to introduce you to something that you're going to run into sooner or later if you study mammalogy or paleontology. And that is the dental formula. A dental formula is a diagram that shows what kinds of teeth are in a mammal's mouth and how many of each kind it has. And uh, in order to interpret the dental formula, you picture a mammal's skull uh, or head facing to the left. And then as you go from left to right, it shows you the numbers of each different kind of tooth in the mammal's mouth. Let's uh, take an example that's probably familiar to you, the domestic dog, Canis familiaris. There may be one of these in your own house. And if your dog trusts you enough to open up its mouth and count its teeth, you'll find that it has three incisors on each side of its upper jaw. And it has three incisors on each side of its lower jaw. On the top and on the bottom, there's one canine on the top, there's four premolars on each side of the jaw and two molars. In the bottom jaw, you've also got four premolar teeth, but three molars in the lower jaw. Let's see what that looks like on the skull of an actual dog. Once again, you've got one of these in your own house, but yours has skin and muscle wrapped around it. So here's the cranium, the upper jaw of the dog, and there's those three canine teeth right there. Uh, I'm sorry, are the three incisor teeth right there. There's the canine there. And then one, two, three, four premolars. And then there is uh, the first and the second molar, uh, as we see in the diagram there in the upper jaw. And then in the lower jaw, there's our three incisors. And then there's the canine, one, two, three, four premolars here, and then molars, one, two, and just barely you can see three right down there, the little tiny third molar. So uh, in a mammal, you have the same number of teeth almost always on the right side and the left side of each jaw. So when you add up all of these numbers, then you multiply that figure by two, and that gives you the total number of teeth in the mammal's head and in the dog. Uh, in the case of the dog, that number is 42. One more thing that I'll mention about dogs, as long as we've got one in my hand, is uh, the carnassial blades. We mentioned this before talking about hyenodon. Um, on a carnivorous mammal, one of the teeth is elongated into a sharp-edged shearing blade uh, in the um, lower jaw. It's that first molar and in the upper jaw, it's the last premolar. So you can see these two are long, shearing, sharp-edged blades. And if you articulate it like that, then when the dog opens and closes its mouth, those blades shear past each other for cutting meat. And that's characteristic of mammals that are in the order carnivora. Something else I'd like to point out, because this will become important later, is that when a mammal closes its mouth, the a uh, canine, the upper canine, is behind the lower canine. So that lower canine sticks up in front of the upper canine there. Alrighty. Now, how about our own selves? Well, uh, on a human, the dentition is reduced relative to the dentition that we see in a dog. A human has two incisors in both the upper and lower jaw. There they are. And then there's a canine in both the upper and lower jaw. There's the upper canine on the human and then the lower canine right there. And then we've got two premolars. Your dentist might refer to these as bicuspids rather than premolars, but whatever you call them, there's two of them right there in the upper jaw and then two of them right there in the lower jaw and then one, two, three molars and one, two, three molars uh, in the upper jaw as well. If you're very young, you might not have that last set of molars just yet. Those don't uh, come in until you've reached maturity. For this reason, they're called the wisdom teeth. The idea being that they don't appear until you've achieved some wisdom.
more of a hope than a certainty. But uh, you may not have them yet, or if you've had them removed by your dentist, as I have, then you may be missing that. But if you've got all your teeth, including the wisdom teeth, then the total number of teeth in your head is 32. Incidentally, you can see this even more easily in the jaws of our closest living relative, the chimpanzee. The chimpanzee has the two incisors here in the upper jaw, the canine, there's the two premolars right there, and then here's the one, two, three molars right there. It's easier to see this in the chimpanzee than in the human because we've got these very small canines that actually look a bit like incisors, but there's no mistaking the canine in the chimpanzee jaw, and that makes it much easier to count the incisors and then the uh, premolars and the molars themselves. Now, another fossil that I've mentioned before, another uh, skull, is that of Hesperocyon, the world's oldest dog found right here in Wyoming in the uh, White River Formation, southeast of Douglas. And uh, this didn't look a whole lot like a dog at first glance. A dog has a long snout and a forehead, uh, giving it a very distinctive skull shape, but Hesper Scion has a short snout and a flat head. Uh, the eyes go right here, and if you saw one in life, you might be forgiven for mistaking it for a mongoose. But count up those teeth, and you'll find that Hesper Scion has uh, three molars in both the upper and lower jaw. Now a mongoose has two molars in the upper jaw, but it's got two molars in the lower jaw as well. And this is different from the arrangement you see in dogs. Dogs have the three molars in the lower jaw, and so the presence of three molars in the lower jaw of Hesper Scion shows that despite its mongoose-like appearance, this was definitely a dog. Now, one last thing that I'm going to uh, show you today is the skull of a bear, because a bear has, um, in youth at least, the same dental formula as a dog. It, um, so if your dog is named Bear, that's actually a very appropriate name for it, because like a dog, a bear has three upper incisors, one canine, and uh, it has uh, two molars in the upper jaw. Now one difference is that the uh, premolars of a, a bear are very much reduced. So you've got a pair of little holes here showing where some tiny peg-like premolar teeth used to be. The lower jaw undergoes a similar process. The bear starts out when it's young with uh, the full complement of four premolar teeth, but these get lost as it gets older and the holes close up. So that's an important thing to uh, remember when you're looking at a bear. The other thing is that those carnassial blades are not present because uh, the bear has retained these teeth uh, in their original crushing shape because it eats less meat and more fruits and vegetables.